In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through Chapter 3.6 Firm Costs, Revenue and Objectives So firstly, we need to look at the definitions and calculations of every cost. The total cost is the sum of all fixed costs and variable costs. These are all of the expenses of the company represented in this line here. The total cost curve starts here because the total costs also account for the fixed costs the business has to pay despite its output, yes, even at zero. And the average cost per unit is the total cost divided by the total output of the business. The total average cost starts off to be quite high. This is due to high fixed costs and low output. As output increases, this spreads the total fixed costs, which decreases the average total cost here. And as we increase output even further, the firm suffers from, now get ready for a fancy term, diminishing marginal returns. One of the reasons could be that the firm has now reached maximum capacity and finds it very difficult to make an additional unit of output. Fixed costs are costs that firms have to pay irrespective of how much it produces. So if it produces zero output here, it still needs to pay its overhead costs regardless of the output. Some examples include labor, interest on loan, insurance, rent, security, etc. etc. And the costs again remain unchanged, which is illustrated by this horizontal line here. Average fixed costs are the firm's average fixed cost per unit of output. So the higher the output, this will reduce the average fixed costs over time. Knowing this will support the strategic decisions of scaling its operations. And the calculation is fixed cost divided by the total output. Total variable costs are costs that change as the level of output changes. This could be sometimes called direct costs, as the costs are directly involved with the output. An example for variable costs for a pizza would be the bread, cheese, peppers, and everything directly related to a pizza. So variable cost increases as output increases. So the more pizzas you make, the more materials are required, therefore increasing your variable costs. So the calculation is variable cost per unit multiplied by the output. The average variable cost refers to the variable cost per unit of output. What happens in this diagram here is that the average variable cost starts to fall initially. This is due to the optimal use of variable inputs. This can be achieved through economies of scale. But as output increases over time, there is a diminishing returns due to fixed factors. A fixed factor could be a business running at overcapacity. So if the business decides to make another unit of output, it will be more expensive due to capacity issues. And the calculation for this is the total variable cost divided by the output. And in the long run, all costs are variable. This is because the factors of production can be altered if there is sufficient time. So if we expand our time horizon from one year to, say, 50 years, within 50 years, additional labor will be hired, more equipment will be purchased, such as ovens, and the business will generally expand. So if this diagram was scaled to 50 years, the total costs over 50 years will just be going up and to the right. So if we adjust our perspective to, let's say, 50 to 100 years, which is the long run, all costs are clearly variable. Moving on to total revenue and average revenue. Total revenue is the amount payable to a firm from the sale of its goods and services. This is the aggregate amount of money or the total amount of money that a business will receive from selling its goods and services. The calculation is its selling price multiplied by the quantity. And remember that all costs are not included in this calculation. 
The average revenue is the typical price received per unit from the sale of a good. This allows the business to make decisions for future pricing decisions or strategy. The calculation is the total revenue divided by the output. And now we move on to the objectives of firms. Firstly, we have survival. This is when startup firms' initial objective will be to survive in a highly competitive market. They will have to be content to just simply cover costs and to remain in the market, and during periods of low demand, such as a recession, even large firms will have to be content with survival. Social welfare is an objective usually for the state-owned enterprises, and they aim for the embetterment of the community. They usually will charge low prices to ensure necessities are available for the low-income families to ensure that they are affordable. Private firms are also contributing to social welfare by being more environmentally sustainable. Another objective, which is the most common one, which is profit maximization, as firms seek the largest possible profit over a period of time. They aim to raise their revenue and reduce their costs. And lately, to attract even more customers, they embark on environmentally friendly practices to ensure a positive brand perception and being ethical and sustainable creates a unique selling point. Growth is an objective as increasing the size of the firm will gain them increased market share. They get economy to scale because of this and the owners and directors' pay is linked directly to the growth of the firm so it is their incentive to grow the firm. Merging with other firms will lower the competition in the market. Less choice for the customer, less substitute goods, which leads to more demand and revenue for the firm that's merged. I hope that helped. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.